Introducing first the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black. He weighed in at 235 pounds. His professional record is unblemished. 16 victories, 12 by knockout. From Dallas, Texas, here is Ike, the president. Ike Abucci, Ike Abucci. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white and weighing 226 pounds. He too is undefeated with 27 victories, 23 by knockout. From South Auckland, New Zealand, here is the WBC International Heavyweight Champion, David the Terminator Tua. Top of the right. Where? Right. No, they they did it. It's okay. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, Tua. Okay, you had your instructions in the dressing room. Give me a good fight. Shake hands. Fighters like Tua always look easier to hit, or even easier to beat, than they really are. They have such extraordinary will. They put so much pressure on that they can undermine even the best of athletes. And Lou Duba doesn't like the way David e or Ike Ibeabuchi's gloves have been put on. And so now Ibeabuchi's gloves will be adjusted under the guidance of referee Lou Filippo. We'll tape him in the second round. They got to go back and get it. You heard Filippo. Okay say that they will tape his gloves in the second round. Got to go back and get the tape. And immediately, Abeyabuchi begins jabbing to try to keep Tua out there on the end of his jab. People in David Tua's camp, notably trainer Ronnie Shields, saying is a better fighter than David Izandrite, stronger, a better boxer. If so, Tua could be in for a long night. Abeyabuchi starting very fast. Good combinations, body and head. Two a little bit slow to get untracked here in the early going. Ibea Bucci, as Larry pointed out, working behind the jab and landing combinations. Uppercut for Ibea Bucci. Two and not getting off. Hard right hand over the top by Tua. Ibea Bucci says, I've got your right hand right here. And comes back to the body. He also had a low left, for which he was warned. Tua leaning in and looking to get off at close range. Ibeabuchi strong enough to keep Tua bodied off and go back to working on his jazz. Ibeabuchi's confidence coming in against the extremely heralded Tua. You don't have to be concerned about that anymore. It's Tua who looks as though he's a little bit overwhelmed here in round one, and Ibeabuchi is just firing away. Hey, keep him up. Sometimes a fighter, Jim, early in a fight will throw a lot of punches because he's not confident, because he wants to see how he behaves in the air as well as his opponent. Tua taking his time. Good left hook. Doesn't phase him. Ibeabuchi landing the left hook right on the button. Two has only had a chance to throw one of his patented sweeping left hooks. Ibeabuchi just a little bit low, but Tua had referee Lou Filippo blocked off from that one. difference you already see in Tua from his last couple of fights, which is he's trying to smother Ibeabuchi's punches by staying right on top of him. Ibeabuchi missing with a big left hook. 
to a blocking a right hand, and now Tua begins to bob with the head as round one comes to a close. Through three rounds, Ike Ibeabuchi not slowing down against David Tua. Ibeabuchi with 182 punches, 91 apiece in the first two rounds, through 95 punches in the third round. So with his extraordinary activity level, he's dominating the fight so far. seems to be smothering himself. He, does, he doesn't seem free enough to get off. You heard Lou Duva asking him between rounds to step into position to throw to the body. But he doesn't have time to step into position to throw to the body because Ibeabuchi is throwing at him the whole time. that you got two big heavyweights pounding away at one another. In another boxing after dark brawl, Ike Ibeabuchi looking for a huge upset over rising prospect David Tua. And so far, Ibeabuchi winning the first three rounds, at least in our eyes, watch it, hold it. as he watch doubles it. Tua on, in man. punch output. Now Tua begins to rake Ibeabuchi's body with hard right hands. Still holding his own against Tua. Pick the left hand up, all right? Oh, right. Yeah. You heard Curtis coax the trainer who senses that Tua is coming on and feels that his fighter has to make a stand here, not to let it get away from him. Curtis Coax told us about Ike Bayabuchi. He said he has more desire than any fighter I've ever known in the game, and that's saying something because Curtis Cox has been in the game more than 40 years. He's going to need all of that desire and more now. In the last two rounds, Ibeabuchi's connect percentage by CopyBox count slipping well below 20%. He had been landing at a 50% rate early in the bout. Tua's connect percentage is rising as he gets in more and more of those right hands across the top, the occasional left hook, and when he remembers to do it, body shots. Good hard right hand to the body by Tua. Ibeabuchi tries to come back to Tua's rib cage, but without effect. Bucci 
firing mostly against Tua's arms and elbows. Got in a left hook, but Tua landed the counter right hand in return. And the left hook landing flush for Tua. Ibeabuchi throwing, but by far the most damage now being done by the hard punching New Zealander, David Tua. has made Ibeabuchi so conscious of the right hand that the left hook is increasingly there for him. He's fighting gallantly, but he hasn't been able yet to mount the kind of all-out attack that Cokes asked him for. So you have to wonder if he has one left in him. assignment for David Tua tonight trying to wear down a fighter who got the jump on him and was more of an aggressor in the early rounds and that left hook by Bayabuchi his best punch in three rounds lands another quick left hook as Tua so conscious of aggression with the right hand that he started to drop it wasn't blocking his cheek and Bayabuchi hey. took advantage to twice land the left hook What a fight! And as they come out for the 12th, Ike Bayabuchi smiles at David Tua and nods as if to say, hey, you are some man. And Tua smiled right back at him, Jim. Fabulous sportsmanship, great competition. Both fighters giving it the best they've got. Ibeabuchi starting the 12th the way he started the first. Firing combinations to try to get Tua's attention. And Tua coming on with the heavy artillery. Very good punches. Very, very good punches. unbeaten. Neither man wants to lose. Tua trying to bust Ibeabuchi up in the 12th with that massive left hook. It's, it's almost a shame, Jim, that one of these fellows isn't a champion and the other a challenger because this would be one hell of a heavyweight championship fight. It has been that caliber of a battle. Probably going to wind up with an all-time CompuBox record for most punches ever thrown by heavyweights in a 12-round bout. In fact, as I turn to look at the punch counters, they assure me it's already a record. Crowd chanting, Tua, Tua, Tua. Ibeabuchi deserves just as much adulation tonight. for another one of those late knockouts. Ibeabuchi hoping to get to the scorecards and see if maybe the judges have seen it his way. I've never 
never seen two big men hammer at each other like, quite like that, Jim. We never? May have, we may have seen better fighters, surely. Uh, great fighters, but two big men hammering right at each other like that for 12 rounds, throwing that many punches. That's, that's extraordinary. I thought Tua won a close decision. I think so, too. I'll be surprised if David Tua doesn't get the decision, but I can't wait to see Ike Ibeabuchi again. Harold, how do you have it after 12? Larry, let's make it a threesome. I thought David Tua won a close decision. 115, 113, seven rounds to five, David Tua. I want to tell you something. I don't think he stole that last round with those last few shots. I thought Ike won it, but be as it may, I still think David had enough of a lead to win this fight. You know, when Ike gave him room to punch, David did best. When Ike stood in toe-to-toe -to -toe in those first couple of rounds, I thought Ike did really well. But as the fight wore on, David Tua showed he was the stronger puncher. The reason that this fight is so hard on the judges is because half the time you're looking at a guy's back because heavyweights move very, very slowly. They don't turn much. It's hard to really get a good view. In any case, 7 to 5, 115, 113, David Tua. Extraordinary effort by both fighters. And what a statement on Ibeabuchi's courage and desire that after being hurt at the end of the 11th, he came out and clearly won the first minute of the 12th round, imposing his will on the extraordinary Tua during that part of the frame. And it is indeed an all-time record for punches thrown by two heavyweights in a bout scored by CompuBox over 12 rounds. In fact, they threw more punches through 12 rounds than Ali and Frazier threw in their 14 hellacious rounds in Mandela. Still waiting for the official decision from the judges. Tua looking for his 28th consecutive win. Only the fifth time that he's had to go the distance. Ibeabuchi told us yesterday, after tomorrow night, I will no longer be a secret kept. And now let's go to ring announcer Jim Hall for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Young scores this fight 117-111. Judge Ellis Brew sees it 115-114. Judge Jordan scores this fight 116-113. Unanimous decision in favor of the new WBC International Heavyweight Champion, Ike, the President, Ibeo Bucci. Upset City for the second consecutive week on Boxing After Dark. A giant upset strikes the heavyweight division. As the judges are impressed by Ike Ibeabuchi's 975 punches thrown, most ever by an individual heavyweight in a 12-round fight. So a unanimous decision victory for Ibeabuchi. And he thanks God Thank for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord. Final punch stat numbers, and you can see that Ibeabuchi landed 40 more punches, threw 220 more, a lower percentage, but both fighters landing at an extraordinary high percentage in this high contact boxing match. You're about to meet a delightful personality as Larry Merchant stands by with the winner, Ike Ibeabuchi.